Okay, there's one more type of ray intersection I'd like to talk about, and that's ray intersect vertical cylinder. So we have a ray here with an endpoint P0 in the direction V, and then we have a cylinder here, which is vertically oriented. So what I mean is its vertical direction is parallel to the Y axis in our coordinate system here. So we're gonna parameterize the cylinder by a center. I'll call this, this vector C by a center vector and then a height h with respect to the vertical direction. So I'll say this height h is here. Um, and actually we need one more piece of information because we need to know how wide the cylinder is. So we're also going to specify a radius of a circular cross section in the xy plane. Each of these cross sections should have a radius of r, we'll say. So those are the three pieces of information that you need to parameterize the cylinder. So a scalar h for the height, a scalar r for the radius, and then a vector c for the center. Now, you might look at this and say, okay, that's, that's great if we can do that, but not all cylinders in the world are vertical. But I can deal with this, so suppose I rotated my cylinder 70 degrees this way. Well, what I can do is I can reduce it to the problem that I'm about to tell you about intersecting a ver vertical cylinder by taking the cylinder and the ray and rotating them by negative 70 degrees and then solving this problem. So if I know how to intersect a vertical cylinder, I can always transform my ray into um, a configuration where I can do the ray intersect vertical cylinder. And then once I'm done, I can just rotate back. So let me just kind of do that visually here. And it probably intersects some point on the bottom here. And then I'll just take it and I'll rotate it back to, to the orientation that it was in. And there I have my intersection, okay? So we'll talk about a little more of the math to do that uh, when we get to ray tracing later in the course. First, we need to introduce some stuff about matrix math. So I'll hold off on that for now, but just to tell you, at least visually, hopefully you're convinced that this is not just so specific to vertical cylinders. If we figure out how to do this, we can generalize it later. All right, now how do we do this though, even in the vertical case? Well, let's just look at this particular example. If I were to extend the vector this way, looks like it would probably hit the cylinder somewhere on the front around there. So maybe I'll call this point of intersection P. Okay, so there's the point of intersection P. Now to solve for this, what we can do is reduce to a problem that we already know, which is ray intersect sphere. And the reason is, because if we take the cross sections of this vertical cylinder in the X, Z plane, they are circles, which are otherwise known as spheres in the plane. So what we're gonna do is project the cylinder and the ray down onto the plane, Y equals zero. So let me do that. So let me try to draw the plane here. And yeah, give me a second, I'll get the plane set up. All right, there's the plane. So now what I'm gonna do is project one of the circular cross sections down onto the plane. And so visually, that's it's gonna look like this. So there is, is where this ends up down in the plane. Uh, mathematically, what it is, is it's saying, let me suppose that the center of this had components CX, CY, and CZ. What I'm saying then is, let's just ignore the Y component of the center and pretend that it's zero. So if I project this down here, what I'm really saying is, I'll, I'll call it C prime. C prime is a vector that has the same X and Z components as the center but the Y component is zero. And we're gonna do the exact same thing for the endpoint of the ray. So I'm gonna move the endpoint of the ray down into the plane and ignore its Y coordinate. So if this had components P0X, P0Y, P0Z, I'm gonna pretend that it actually has components P0X, zero, P0Z. And then I'm also going to take the projection of this direction vector V, 
which has components vx, vy, vz, and ignore the y component. And so what I'm going to do is, is do the projection of v, the parallel projection of v, onto this plane. And I'll do it up here first, just so you can see what the vector looks like next to the original. But basically, I'm just going to ignore the y component. So, so I'll take this, and actually, the way to do it would be to drop it perpendicular down here, and then draw this like this. And that is going to be the projection of the direction vector onto the plane. So let me go and draw this down here. And actually, it looks like I might need to adjust this a little bit. Um, the projection probably happened a little bit higher here. So it probably looks something like this. All right, so the endpoint is going to be P0, X0, P0, Z, and then the direction vector is going to be V, X, 0, V, Y. And now we can do a ray intersect sphere calculation. Uh, you could save some computation if you just ignored the Y component and treated, treated these as VEC 2s. But you could also just use the exact same code we talked about a moment ago for ray intersect sphere. And so let's just do that. So I do ray intersect sphere, and then I hit this point here. So let me try to depict that. So we've got this, this intersection here. And if I then um, look at the ray parameter that I used, okay, so this is gonna, this little problem down here is gonna, gonna say, all right, this intersection point, um, yeah, so I should put primes and everything to be careful there. So this is P0 prime, uh, this is V prime. That's the direction vector here. And then I'll call this this um, T. That's the ray parameter that, that gets me to this point of intersection P prime. And so the equation is that P prime is equal to P zero prime plus T times V prime, all right? So we solved that ray intersect sphere, sphere problem. Now it turns out we can use that exact same T if you look at it. Um, this moves us along the, the component in the XZ plane. Uh, but actually, if we then also go back to the original endpoint and allow you to use the full vector, which has a component in Y, that exact same T will get you from the original P0 to the actual point of intersection here. All right, so, so this would be P0 plus TV, the original V and the original P0. So if you solve for the T down here on the projection, then you can get this, the T, which is the exact same T that you need to use on the original ray all right so that's that's it and so you just do a ray intersect sphere down here ignoring the z coordinate that gets you the t you need and then you can get your point of intersection one thing i should be a little bit careful about here though is if i have a ray that comes in like this um in this direction it's going to tell me that there's an intersection point above where the cylinder actually is because this method of projecting down to the plane really is is working with an infinite cylinder that extends infinitely up and infinitely down and so you know this this would give us like this point right here which is floating above the cylinder so we need to check the y component of the point of intersection and make sure that it's actually uh, between the top and the bottom of the cylinder. So center y plus height over 2 and center y minus height over 2. So I should, you know, make, make sure that um, py is between cy minus height over 2 and cy plus height over 2. Uh, if it's not, then we rule out an intersection with this part of the cylinder. But we actually still have the cap on the top and the bottom. 
So, I mean, actually, if you kept going and didn't have that cap, it would eventually hit the cylinder back here. But um, if we consider the cap to be part of the cylinder, then it's going to end up hitting the cap, the top of it, before it hits the side over there. And so, yeah, so here's a picture that shows a similar scenario. And so actually what I need to do is, is in addition to doing this, this infinite cylinder part of the intersection, I also need to do what's called a ray intersect disk. I need to perform an intersection with the top cap and the bottom cap and to see if those are valid. Now this is actually fairly straightforward because this cap is contained within a plane that is got a normal, which is vertical. So here I'll say, all right, I've got this plane. Let me take my little plane drawing here and I'm gonna move it so that it's, we can see, okay, here's the cap. It's contained in this plane. This plane is going to be parameterized by um, some point on the plane, which we can take as the center vector plus y or the height over two. So this would be um, Cx, C, Cy plus height over two, Cz. So that's some point on the plane. And then the normal is just gonna be the vector that points straight up, which will be uh, zero, one, zero. All right, so we can, we can do a ray intersect plane like that. Um, but then we gotta make sure that, that the point of intersection is actually on the inside of this circle here. So we're assuming here that these are circular cross sections. So if I look at that from the top down, I've got this, this center vector here. That's at the center of the cylinder. Now I'm just gonna look at the X and Z components. So, so here, this is the X axis, this is the Z axis. And then I have this point of intersection. So I'll call this P. And I wanna see, is this on the inside of the disc or not? And so all I have to do is, I, I guess I should better remind us this is really in 3D because yeah, we're just gonna kind of ignore the Y coordinate for a second. And so if this, this point of intersection that I got on the plane, so, so I'll just ignore the, the, the Y component again, so I'll say maybe PX, zero PY. Um, if, if that is on the inside of the disc, then the vector that I construct from the center to that point should have a length that is, is less than or equal to the radius of the cylinder. So in this case, it looks like it is because if I look at the, at the full radius, that is gonna be greater than the length from, from this center to the, the point of intersection. So it's just like, like with ray intersect triangle where you find the intersection with the plane first, then find whether or not that point is actually inside the triangle. Here, we same thing, we, we find the intersection of the ray with the plane that spans this disc, and then we make sure that it's inside uh, the disc by checking the length of this vector and comparing it to the radius of the cylinder. And so that's all we do. So we gotta do this for the top. We also do a similar thing at the bottom where the normal is, is zero, negative one, zero and the center is, maybe I'll just go ahead and draw that. So, so we do, do a similar thing on the bottom here, but, but this normal goes the other way. And the center is actually gonna be Cy minus H over two. And the normal will be pointing the other way, so that'd be a negative one. So we'll do the same kind of thing there to see if there's an intersection um, with, with that plane. I mean, eventually there will be an intersection with that plane for, for this vector, as long as it's not um, parallel to the plane that contains. So yeah, it looks like, like here, there eventually will be an intersection, probably way over here, with the plane that contains the bottom disc. But then we would look at that and say, okay, well, that's outside of the circle. So that definitely is not a valid intersection with the cylinder. Uh, the other thing is, yeah, I guess we should compare Let's see, do we have to do this? I was gonna say, you know, there's really three things we're checking here. Um, the top disc, the bottom disc, and the infinite cylinder. And, and we can compare to see which of the T's is the smallest. But actually I think, 
well, okay, you could have you could have a ray that's going from the top down, or, or that sort of yeah maybe does actually intersect both the top and the bottom. So you do have to check both, and then take the t that's the smallest, just like we did with ray intersect sphere. Um, it might intersect the cylinder in a couple of places, but we need to check for the smallest one, and and take that. Okay, so you know a little bit more complicated, but just to show you. This is something that we can break up into things that we already know how to do. So cylinder is something that we can reduce into problems that we've already spent time on. And then as I said, if we want to do like a rotated cylinder, or even a, a, a scaled cylinder, one that doesn't have circular cross sections, but maybe ellipsoidal cross sections, we, we, can, we can do that. We, by, we can always reduce this problem to a, a vertical cylinder that has circular cross sections. All right, so that's ray intersect cylinder. Hopefully that helps. And eventually when we get to the ray tracer, that'll be like an optional task that you can do. All righty.